plug your instrument into an effects pedal, you are met with a deliciously different tone, one that can take an infinite variety of flavors. What pedals you're using, the settings you've selected, these factors and many more will make a huge difference. But what the hell is going on here, really? Welcome to your very first class of Effects Pedals 101. Today we'll teach the basics of building a signal path, and then we'll get experimental with it. Time and time again, when staring at a collection of awesome pedals and a pile of cables, you ask, I ask, we all ask, which order should I put these effects in? And every time it's asked, it's definitely a worthwhile question. The order in which you place the effects in the signal chain has a drastic effect on the sounds that they'll make together. And you can learn something new every time you jump in. So, the basics, let's begin. Before we even get into the pedals themselves, one thing to know, the direction of pedal boards and pedal chains is kind of like reading backwards, right to left, bottom to top. Most inputs are on the right and most outputs are on the left. So that's generally the way that we'll be stringing them together. If you have a pedal tuner, the best spot for it is gonna be right at the beginning of the chain. Tuning will be more accurate, and you've got yourself a kill switch if you need it. And have a pedal tuner. Get yourself a pedal tuner. Wah pedals, auto wahs, envelope filters, all these types of pedals depend on playing dynamics. So you want them to catch your playing clean. We have a crybaby, about as classic of a wah as you can get, and then right next to it we have something a bit more unique, the Game Changer Audio Plus. Being a sustain pedal, it does micro sampling and it lets you set how long it takes to fade up and how long it takes to cascade away. The way we're using it, it makes sense to keep this early in the chain so that your pure guitar signal is what's getting captured from the plus. The rest of the pedals can affect it after the fact. Okay, let's get into compressors. Now, this is not a technical definition, but in practice, compressors will bring up the softer parts of your playing and tame the more aggressive moments, like pick attack. Because of this, they can sometimes make the undesirable noise from any other effects before them louder. So, put them right after anything that relies on dynamics and before you start adding a bunch of other pedals to the mix. Kind of pedal that tracks your pitch and then changes the pitch makes a harmony or a synth sound like a whammy or a, this electro harmonics intelligent harmony machine or any of ehx's nine series pedals place them here so that the input notes get tracked accurately This category includes overdrives, distortions, and fuzzes. Most pedal junkies have at least two of these pedals on their board, often more. How you combine them is truly up to you. Any and all combinations are welcome here. If it makes your signal distorted and dirty, this is the place for it. You might also want to drop a boost in the equation here. And boosts can go before the drive, after them, or at the end of the signal chain altogether. 
but definitely this is an area of your pedal board where you should try out all the different combinations and find what you really like. Before we get to the next major section, you might find that you want to introduce a volume pedal here so that you can swell all of your richly saturated tone into the wonderful modulation pedals, the delays and reverbs that will follow. Tremolos, vibratos, choruses, phasers, flangers. If it modulates, place it here, after your dirt section. The order between these, if you have multiples, is also very subjective, so have fun experimenting. Placed toward the end of your chain, delays and reverbs will repeat and reflect everything coming into them. So if you want your distorted lead tone delayed or your harmonizer a little more haunting, delays and reverbs need to go here. The traditional approach is delay first and reverb second but there are some who prefer the opposite. If you tend to like more uh, spacious settings and ambient settings, uh, the traditional method will probably work best for you. But again, this is yours to experiment. There are lots of pedals that are not as easy to categorize, and we're talking about utility pedals. A noise gate, EQ, buffers, etc. These pedals are for addressing issues you might have with your effects chain. Too much noise or too much bass. So you use them as necessary after your dirt section, after a particularly noisy vintage pedal, or wherever they're most useful. We have a lot more fine detail on Reverb News, so click the link in the description to learn a lot more about this. So, now that we've gone over all the basic rules, it's time to break them, which, after all, is always more fun. And some of the best sounds you'll ever come up with will come from deliberately misordering or mismatching pedals. Sometimes the best way to do something is the wrong way. We do this all the time in our Sound Recipes series, so click above to find our full Sound Recipes playlist. All right, let's break some rules, let's get experimental and have some fun. Here we go.
enjoyed effects pedals 101 signal chains have fun experimenting with your signal chains drop any questions or cool ideas down in the comments and we'll see you next time